Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico. And if you're new to the channel, we ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young, old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, I, I'm going to put myself to the test. I mean, I've listened to a lot of metal on this station, uh, on this channel, station, channel, <laughs> station. I'm thinking like radio, right? But... Just Some, Just Some, four months ago, had recommended that we listen to Death Spell Omega, and I put it up on the community poll, and it won. You know, I put four bands up there, and so I've got the lyrics here because I, I did delve into this a little bit. I mean, I have to because, you know, so far, nothing on the channel has uh, tripped me up. I've had a couple reactions that were close where I was a little bit like huh you know but I, I wasn't ever completely out of it but black metal you know I haven't listened well I, I have listened to more of it I guess than I should give myself more credit uh, but I've mostly listened to the Norwegian black metal the second wave and so anyhow um, uh, lyrics are important so I did delve into the lyrics first and so I kind of know what these guys are about they're from Poitiers France if I said that correctly Francais um, and yeah so anyway um, it's, it'll probably be a lot of double bass kicks and and things that challenge me and maybe some discordant things and uh, we'll see about the vocals you know raspy vocals um, yeah, I'm picky about my metal, just like I'm picky about my rap and some other genres and picky about electronica. But yeah, let's go ahead and delve into it. Um, if you like what I'm doing, hit that like or subscribe button. Uh, I've got a Patreon page below too. Yeah, and I think this calls for a Dr. Pepper. Cero Azucar, no sugar. But uh, yeah. I think I need a Dr. Pepper. Let's go.
Berlin. So I killed the lyrics.
Oh yeah. So there's that ad again, so we'll click out of that. Um, I got it. I understood it. But that doesn't mean I could follow the lyrics. That's why I just bailed from him. I was trying to match his vocals. Uh, so, you know, it was English and French. And sometimes I followed it. <clears throat> But I, I lost my place. I'll just be honest. So I decided to kill the lyrics. And then I started really appreciating the music more when I just listened to it. And I could make out a few words, not many. But obviously the drumming. Jeez. <laughs> that drumming is phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's superhuman, right? And then I liked, uh, you know, the way the instruments played together. I, I totally got it. I got the way they're not, you know, they're not doing verse, chorus, verse, and they're not doing, uh, you know, classic um, uh, do re mi, uh, you know, try it. Like one time I composed 50 seconds of classical music. I just did it on a program called MuseScore. And it was just to experiment with triads so that I could teach myself what triads were. And then I played it back. I'm like, okay. And triads are logical. They make sense. Uh, this is um, instruments banging up against each other. But I got it. It's very avant-garde. And I listen to tons of avant-garde music. Um, the bass seemed a little down in the mix now the singer he's singing his heart out man especially on that third piece so just him just him i wanted to just take the most popular album of theirs which is also the highest rated on all music four and a half stars and just take the first three cuts because what i read was that they want you to listen to this whole album in one piece but there are a couple breaks and there's a break after track three so I said, okay, let's just do tracks one, two, three, and then there'll be a pause and we'll stop there and we'll talk about the music. Um, yeah, I loved it. I have to admit, it's not my wheelhouse, okay? So like I'm doing a series on my 133 favorite artists and you won't find any black metal in there, but it doesn't mean I don't like it and that I don't appreciate it. So I got, I, I got, and I'm not a musician, but I, I feel like I really got what they were doing. I I liked it musically. And if I just listened to the singer as a fourth instrument, right? Guitar, bass, drum, and vocal. It's really cool. The production is really cool, too. 
but you know, reading the lyrics, listening to him singing, I still haven't on a first listen. I'm not able to put those lyrics with that singing. I, I, I just can't. I just uh, would have to listen to the song over and over again to um, hear the music with the words coming at me, right? So now it's just music. And that's why I'm talking about the drums and the bass and the guitar. I love the guitar. It was, it was uh, you know, it's not your typical metal guitar like Iron Maiden. It's uh, It's got that real... Um, you know, it almost reminds me, it's funny, it almost reminds me at times of bands like the Minutemen, which is a punk band, but it was such angular, jagged guitar, or like, um, you know, more than, say, Gang of Four is really angular, but, you know, D. Boone of the Minutemen used to just do these chords, and once in a while they would remind me just a little bit of uh, D. Boone's guitar playing. And the way he would play with Mike Watt and DJ Hurley, those guys had a very unique way of fitting the three puzzle pieces together. And they kind of reminded me of that, and 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 so I like it. And I think I would listen to this again. Because um, I, I can tell this is a grower. The reason I'm hesitating is I don't know what to rate it, because it's a little out of my wheelhouse. And, and um, you know, I, I tend to have a bias for vocalists where I can understand them. Yeah, but at the same time, when I turn that lyric sheet off and just listen to him as a fourth instrument, the emotion that he's singing with, the power, oh my God, it's great. So I think this is a grower. So what am I going to give it? Um, as metal goes... I think I can honestly give it an A. Yeah, I can honestly give it an A, um, comparing it to other metal music I've listened to. Yeah, I like it. And the lyrics are important. Um, so I listened, when I was listening to all these uh, metal bands that a friend turned me on to, there was one artist that had a lyric about this guy was... Um, uh, being hung to death and he was coming while he was being hung. And I was just like, mm, that, mm, that kind of pushes my boundaries a little bit. But I'm pretty open-minded. You should see the trailer I posted for uh, this um, movie that I'm in called Leche Roja, and, uh, which is red milk. And I play a, a client with a blood fetish. Yeah who is obsessed with a 300-year-old vampirus. Yeah, it's in it's in my post if you want to check it out. It's a, a three-and-a-half-minute trailer, I think. And we did scenes with real cow blood. So I'm not squeamish. You know, I've, I've seen a C-section and some surgery. And yeah, you know, I'm not squeamish about blood or, or or these types of subject matters. And I think these lyrics are above average. That's what I'm trying to get at. When I talked about the hanging and all that, I just like, yeah, come on, you know. But reading these lyrics here about metaphysical Satanism, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I totally get it. And these guys are dead serious. I mean, we've got that other uh, band, Ghost, that we've done which has a whole different approach, right? A more showy approach. These guys are not effing around. They're not kidding. They're dead serious about what they're talking about, and I appreciate it. So, Justin, 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 thanks for uh, doing this. It, it challenged me a little bit, but not as much as I was expecting. I probably could have done without the Dr. Pepper. And uh, like I say, if you want to see, if you like a uh, senior reacting to this kind of music, hit the like or subscribe button. It's been a long video. We'll wrap it up as we say here in Bonita, Mexico. Buen dia.